also love that the um, that the pastor that did get raptured left a um, like a break in case of rapture VHS video yes, telling it from of course. <laughs> I wonder if he had a series of videos like, uh, this is in case I'm caught choking a hooker, but she gets a <laughs> knife out at the last moment. Uh... God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we suffer through yet another selection from Christian cinema and a futile effort to find the good one. And suffering immediately alongside me is my good friend Heath. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, sir. And sitting 989 miles to my right is our good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, so glad you made it through another one. Oh, and indeed I did. <laughs> and joining us for the first time tonight is New York improviser and special guest masochist Devin Heater. Devin, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How are you? Uh, well, you know, we just watched this movie, but other than that, I think pretty good. Well, right. you're doing better. I had to watch it twice because Eli told me about this like a month and a half ago. So I watched it like the second he told me about it because I was excited. And then he was like, oh, yeah, sorry. We got to push it back like four weeks. I watch all so the I've movies this, twice, Devin. I saw this I watched movie twice. all the movies twice. It was actually good because I watched the first time I watched it. I was also playing Final Fantasy seven on my phone. Yeah. So I missed a lot. <laughs> that would have made for a really, really weird no. review. Do you remember the part where Kirk Cameron goes to seduce the mayor by dressing up like a lady? Do you remember when he mayor... had to run up those stairs for five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> so before we get started, we've already kind of spilled the beans. But Heath, tell us, what are we watching today? All right. For this week's episode, we chose a movie called Left Behind the Movie. Yes. Which, as you can tell from the title, is a motion picture. That's what I can tell you about that. Yeah, pretty much says it all. And uh, we've 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 committed to doing all three here, haven't we? Ugh. Ugh. Really? Yeah, yeah. So the whole trilogy over the next three weeks. Now, of course, Devin's only signed on for one. So, uh, but but this is uh, rather appropriate. You have some some apocalypse experience. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, I'm well, I'm pretty well versed in the apocalypse. That is true. So, t uh, tell us about your show. Uh, yeah. So I am a in an improv show called Gus which stands for Generic Underground Shelter. Uh, it is, uh, it's me and two other guys, and it's sort of like a post-apocalyptic buddy comedy. It's like the three of us went down into a shelter, world ended, and we've been stuck there for a long time, and we're slowly going insane. That's basically the show. And we just finished a run in the Fringe Festival here in New York, so it was fun. Oh, awesome, awesome. And as though I've never asked you this question before, is it, uh, is it a biblical apocalypse in the show? or You know, it has been. But uh, it's a different different apocalypse every time. Sometimes we don't really get to it because we're too busy worrying about, you know, how we're going to masturbate with the other two people in the room. Like, sometimes wow. we don't really get to the apocalypse. It's a lot That's about a the mundane, logistics. everyday details yeah. of being trapped in a bunker with two other dudes. By the way, just wanted to throw this out there. Our next Patreon goal is to trap me, Heath, and Noah in an underground bunker. <laughs> nice. So, uh, guys, you know, we're almost there, really... Check that out. You know, give what you can because, again, we're going to be sealed underground for 7 to 12 years. <laughs> 7 to 12 years. <laughs> Lots of fun. Honestly, might as well the way my schedule is right now. Now, of course, everybody's <laughs> going to get a crack at this, but, Devin, you're our guest, so I'm going to give you first go. I'm How bad was this movie? I mean, this movie was was pretty, pretty terrible. Uh, you know, I, I've been listening to, to the other movies you reviewed. I feel like it's probably the best movie that you've reviewed so far on this show, though. I think you're, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's true. I would say that's true. As I was watching this, I thought to myself, like, you know, this is fun. <laughs> I'm having right. fun because yeah. there's no, <laughs> there's no women going through abusive relationships. No, there's no, like, really. avoiding the consequences of abandoning your child. It's just good old fashioned crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, Grant, would I have rather had to call all of my ex-girlfriends and tell them that they have to get tested for an STD than watch this movie? <laughs> yes, but I didn't see, have... See, I do that recreationally. I just, <laughs> just, I just, just do that because those bitches pissed me off. I like to tweet them. <laughs> That's good. Just, just tag them easy. and tag them all on yeah. a Facebook yeah, post. Tag them all in there. Hashtag get tested again. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Hashtag you brought this on yourself. <laughs> 
So Heath, on a, on a scale of one to ten, where one is shit and ten is less shit, where do you rank this one? Um, well, it, it's definitely on that scale somewhere. Um, in fairness, though, this was arguably the best movie from the year two thousand with the word movie in the title, <laughs> I mean, unless you count the Growing Pains movie. But you know, it's yeah, pretty, well. pretty good either way. So we're talking best in breed or close to it. I'm going to give it. Two shits out of ten. I gotta at say, least. Kirk maybe three was on fire uh, that particular year. And finally, Eli, was it everything that you hoped it would be? It it really, really was because you know we watched the Nicolas Cage one, and I was like, ah, you know, is this just going to be a less crazy version mm. of the Nicolas Cage one? And the answer is no. It's going to be a whole lot more fucking crazy. <laughs> Which says a oh, lot, because the Nicolas Cage one was fucking crazy, but we didn't have a scene with the literal Antichrist. And that's the <laughs> level of crazy this movie goes to. This movie, it's like someone watched the Nicolas Cage one, even though it was made afterwards, and they were like, we can do more. <laughs> we can go further. I was shockingly bummed at the, like, the lack of conclusion at the end of it, because like, there's three movies. And like, I was mm. bummed, like at the end of the movie, I was like, shit, do I have to watch the next two just to find out what the fuck happens in this fucking trilogy? It's either that or read the fucking Bible, and I gotta assume that this trilogy is better than, uh, than yeah, I'll that. choose this, I'll choose this movie any day. When I was watching this movie, my roommate came home, she immediately recognized, like, she immediately knew what movie it was, not because she had ever seen it, because she's read all of these books to her grandmother. Oh my god! <laughs> so that was, but she was like, she was like, oh yeah, I remember this part. I'm just like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry that that's your life. <laughs> just make Granny feel better. Don't worry, Granny. All the people who are having orgasms are gonna go to hell, and you're gonna get to go to heaven. So yeah, okay, wow. What a weird thing to read to your grandmother, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't, oh, I don't know. there's a fire demon," said John. It's eating me. It's eating me alive. All right, she's asleep. I'll 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 wait until tomorrow to finish it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't inquire further. I didn't want to know the story behind why that happened. (laughs) Was it a punishment? Did her grandma rob old people or defraud a bank somewhere? Oh, I I thought maybe a punishment for my my roommate. Like grandma, (laughs) you live a life of sin, and you're gonna have to read these books to me to learn. Mm. I'll tell you what, that was a punishment for everyone involved, whether they knew it or not. So now I I apologize, Devin Heath, if I'm leaving you out on this one, because I believe it was just me and Eli that did the remake. But I I, and I should say this for the end. But I'm dying to know, what did you think? Was this a better or worse cinematic experience, Eli, than the Nick Cage uh, version of this? So this was definitely a worse cinematic experience. But that's not anyone's who's in this movie's fault. It's just because there's no Nick Cage. <laughs> you just – everything that happens to the characters in this movie happens to and gets reacted to by Nicolas Cage. So automatically it's better. Right. Automatically, every scene in this movie, we're like, where you're like, mm, that's wacky. It has Nicolas Cage being like, hey, everybody, it's me. <laughs> Happy birthday, little girl. <laughs> Grandma, I'll read you those books. It's just, it's taken to the next level. So every time in this movie, when you would get bored or bummed out, because there were definitely boring parts of this movie, the entire like crying with a Bible in my bedroom, forty-five minute segue mm, of this movie. Time. I would watch that with Nicolas Cage. I would watch Nicolas Cage just be like, Oh, Conair, put the bunny back in the box. Why do I have to invest with Madoff? Uh, Nick, we're recording. Just, just, <laughs> we'll fix it in post. I need to get me there somehow. Did you guys see Season of the Witch? I gave Ron Perlman a hug. That was the peak of my year. So I guess with... That ringing endorsement, we're going to take a quick break to steal our nerves before we take a look at what we heathens have to look forward after we're left behind. Before we get back to the laughs tonight, I want to take a somber moment in remembrance of the many fine careers that were lost in the making of this film. A number of promising rising stars in Hollywood willingly laid down their employability upon the altar of insane Christian filmmaking, and we at God Awful Movies would like to salute them. Starting with Chelsea Noble, who plays the flight attendant turned UN bigwig in this film, and plays the woman having an orgasm when Kirk Cameron gets frisky. While some might say her career was already doomed when she changed her name from Nancy Mueller to Bullshit McActresson, in truth, it was born and died on the same day. 
July 20th of 1991, when she married the Robin to Ray Comfort's Batman. Since Left Behind, her career has consisted of the other Left Behind movies, and occasional reprisals of her bit role in Growing Pains when Jeremy Miller runs out of crack and they have to do a comeback TV movie. Also lost were the careers of Brad Johnson and Gordon Curry, who played the pilot and Antichrist, respectively. Both men had promising TV careers in 1999 and nothing to look forward to but the downward spiral of this trilogy after that. Particularly disappointing was the loss of Curry, who would have made a way better Ozymandias in Watchmen. Of course, it's also worth noting that when this film debuted, it was still possible that Kirk Cameron would have a career outside of the convincing grown-ups to play pretend genre. After all, he was no more washed up than Jason Bateman at this point, who was an even smaller part of an even less successful TV show at the same time, and has now graduated to a person in real movies. But most disappointing of all was the loss of Clarence Gilliard Jr., who seemed poised to become white America's favorite stereotypical black guy after playing the token funny black guy in Matlock, the token funny black guy in Top Gun, the token funny black guy in Die Hard, and the token funny black guy in Walker, Texas Ranger. But unfortunately, since this film's release, America has had to turn elsewhere to find their funny black men talking how them brothers do. So, in memories of the careers of Chelsea Noble, Brad Johnson, Gordon Curry, Kirk Cameron, and Clarence Gilliard Jr., we bow our heads in remembrance, comforted only by the fact that anyone who decided to stick with this thing after seeing a screen treatment kind of deserved it. Hi there, welcome to The Survivalist. How can I help you today? Oh, um, hey, I was wondering if you sell tents. Sorry, what? Uh, tents? Do you sell tents for camping? And No, sir, we do not. Oh, okay, I thought you would have had him. You would be wrong. We have a business, uh, and we are a business for preppers, not a camping store. I'm sorry, uh, preppers? People who prepare for the end of the world. Preppers. I'm sorry, didn't that already happen? What now? The end of the world? Oh, what, that thing? No, 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 my friend. I'm talking about the real deal, the end times. That little spat wasn't half of what's coming. Really? I mean, all those people that got sucked up into heaven. Allegedly. And then, remember when the earth opened and, like, all these demons came pouring out? Allegedly. And then, you know, my wife, she got eaten by rape lizards and, like, a lot of... Or so the government would have you believe? No, I saw it. I saw it. We were holding hands and then they... Well, agree to disagree, my friend. Okay, well, anyway, you know, my son, his hair's turned white and I thought maybe a little camping would cheer him up. Fresh air, get out of the city and the sinkholes filled with lava. The what now? The giant holes in the earth where they're filled with lava and there's one right outside your store. No, oh, I hadn't noticed. I walked in this morning and didn't see it. Didn't see it at all. Yeah, it's none of my business, but I think you might be in some sort of denial. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe I'm just keener than most or maybe owning a small business for six years just means you don't really have any other measurable skills now. So how about we set you up with a gas-powered generator? All of the gasoline in the world turned into sentient fire. It sure did. Sure did. And we're back because if we left now, we watch this piece of shit for nothing. And we open with some vaguely Jesus-y platitudes over a picture of Earth. Yeah, there. this movie opens like a Mission Impossible slash Bond movie with like the things like <laughs> being typed across the screen, except nothing happens. Yeah, no, just randomly like you see a desert and it's like Syria, and then you see a different desert and it's like Pakistan. <laughs> Yeah, it was like Israel, 6 p.m., and at no point did, like, the time matter. Like, it didn't, no. like, <laughs> none of, like, I, like, you know, I could have recognized it was Israel from the fact they're just showing landmarks in Israel. Yeah, it's like they took a bunch of, like, they borrowed a bunch of B-roll from Bond movies. They right. were like, come on, man, we, we're 10 minutes short. And it's like, well, I mean, I've got a bunch of these things. These were locations we didn't use, but you don't want to just put up, like, Israel 6 p.m. Yeah, no, we'll take them. <laughs> we'll take them. We'll use them several times throughout this movie to absolutely no effect. And, I mean, like, half of the people who you saw were clearly just American tourists in Israel. Like, everyone uh-huh. was fat and had a fanny pack. <laughs> like in a country with mandatory military service that is just not what people look like <laughs> right, exactly. unless they're visiting so we meet kirk cameron right away he plays buck williams and he's a uh, a stellar reporter such a good reporter in fact that he hasn't yet learned that you don't turn your head away from the goddamn camera when you're interviewing somebody yeah you know this is going to be a quality movie when the character's first line is i'm buck williams and i'm standing in a wheat field yes <laughs> <laughs> He, when he is very clearly standing in a wheat field. I don't know if that was a segment just for the visually impaired. <laughs> and like, he, he's supposed to be like America's number one news reporter. Like, that's, that's the, that's what they're trying to tell us. He looks 
like a child. I mean, he is a child. The man is will forever be a 14-year-old boy. There's no yeah. way the American people are like, this is who I trust to give me the right. right. Like, we like old Fuck we that like Walter old Cronkite guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if only Walter Cronkite was 15 years old. That's what, that's what the American people really wanted. But now, the good news in this movie is it does not take long to get to the action. They blew their budget in the opening scene of this movie, I'd say. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, no question that they were like, we got all this money! And then the rest of the movie, they were like, fuck, we got to shoot in a bedroom. More of him crying. More of him crying. We have two locations left. I am so sorry. Oh, my God, we've got two movies left to go. We have, we have literally $18 left in the budget, guys. No, we cannot get Subway for lunch. <laughs> no Bring more parties home. And so he basically he's talking to this Jewish guy who invented magic wheat. Who the fuck knows? It or maybe irrigation. Desert. Maybe that's all he invented, right? <laughs> right exactly. He just sort of figured out. You know, this is a desert, but if we brought some piped some water in, I bet we could grow some shit here From <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah, teach us your formula. <laughs> I will give you anything. <laughs> Tell me what you desire. I'll rebuild the third temple for you. Um, you just spray it with a hose. Ah, there it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So he's he's like, yeah, I'm not going to sell it. Eden is not for sale. And then immediately the wheat field and Israel gets attacked by the entire air force of the planet. Yes. Ever. <laughs> right. And that ever will be. There are more. This is. There are millions of planes in the sky just bombing the shit just out of darkening wherever Darkening the fucking sky, blotting out the sun, yes, uh huh. Right, exactly. And I, at this point I wrote in my notes, now the, now we get to shoot missiles at a wheat field, like you do. I, I have to say, as soon as I saw the CGI tanks, I screeched Those with were joy. Brutal. Those yeah. were brutal. Up until then, I wasn't exactly sure. I wasn't a hundred percent positive this movie was going to be horrible. But I want the listeners to imagine just a picture of a tank overlaid on a little plastic piece of paper, and a guy holding that over a desert matte painting, and just kind of moving it along and trying to get it to go along with the terrain. That's the quality of CGI like we had. And, and, and mumbling yeah. and mumbling. Grumble, 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 grumble. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, Dave, we can see your hand. Go fuck yourself. All right, Dave. We gotta stop hiring that guy. <laughs> I also like that Israel just like didn't notice any of this. Like it's no. every it's every fighter jet ever constructed amassing on Israel. And Israel, one of who spends all of their money on military, was just like, oh what, huh? <laughs> right. Fuck, you know what it was? We got Angry Birds too, and we got really into it. It's just one of those things where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna get to the level where you get the little chest. I just wanted to get the little <laughs> chest, and I totally took my eyes off the screen. It's on me. Hey, Amir, did you accept my Candy Crush invite? Come on. Just give me a life. Now, luckily for our hero, though, uh, this wheat field is located about nine inches from the NORAD defense system of Israel. The Israeli Pentagon is right there. Yes. And if you thought that that was going to be explained or if someone was going to point out why, no. We are led to believe that this wheat field, this magic wheat field, just also happens to have a full-grade military bunker underneath it. Just like, so this is where we keep the peanuts and the squash, and over there is where we keep the anti-missile defense guns. And then (laughs) A military bunker that you can just walk into without being murdered to death. (laughs) Oh, yeah, just just stroll casually into it. With an American reporter, yeah. Right, exactly. And then, of course, we have the great quote. He goes, uh, he goes, who's attacking us? And he goes, could be anyone. <laughs> Nobody has more enemies than Israel. I mean, it's probably not Iceland. I feel like we can cross <laughs> them off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Quebec probably didn't, you know, secede from Canada, build an air force and fly over. We don't really have to worry about Utah. Nope. No. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard to tell when your radar screen is the exact size of Israel and that's it. They, they, they made it the, <laughs> yeah, that exactly the size <laughs> of the country. It's kind of made it tricky. And, and again, it looked like Galaga. Just watching us, yeah, guys. Yeah. Don't worry. They, like they were invaders, coming. They had them. I mean, if you look at the thing, it's like they're in a perfect circle around Israel and like flying in as opposed to just like attacking from one direction. (laughs) Yeah. Uh Yeah. They're being attacked by one of those like those Fourth of July flight teams that does the stunts and stuff. That's whatever. A perfect circle. All right, guys. Now we're going to do a flip and we're going to shoot some bombs at people. (laughs) Very good. All right. And now, of course, the Israelis are caught, as, as, as Devin said, completely off guard. So they don't have time to scramble any planes or anything. 
But all of a sudden, the what? I, tell me what was going on. Were the the planes were just blowing up, or or was God shooting them down with brimstone? What was happening in that scene? In my head, God was playing duck hunt. He was just like, "Oh, finally, here we go!" Because the planes are just ex- there's no explanation except that Kirk Cameron's like the planes appear to be j- dropping out of the sky, and that's and it, exploding. <laughs> They just explode themselves. At, at which point, none of the other planes turn around and go, Hey guys, it seems like all everyone starts to explode when we get there. We should not go to that particular spot. Everyone's just like, Nope, here we go. Also, like, if you're Israel, don't you just, like, if I was Israel, I'd just be like, Yeah, no, we have a sweet defense system. Like, never right, try this right. again. You know? It was top secret. We were waiting to show you guys. We're so glad you attacked. <laughs> System Just take the credit here. for it. Yeah. Come out. Yes, that's our new system. We call it the uh, chair table system. Uh, Mr. President, are you just saying things that you see? Chair table. <laughs> it's, it's Jewish. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> it's Hebrew. That's what our language is called. <laughs> so now, of course, um, uh, Kurt Cameron's character, he's in the missile defense bunker learning all about Israel's secret missile defense. Um, but he's a reporter, so damn it, he just can't stay down there. So he has to run upstairs out of the missile bunker and start filming. And this is when the he chose poorly guy from the Last Crusade. Oh, shows I wrote, up. I wrote down. Oh, look, it's one of the knights who say knee. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> just wanders out of the fucking desert in the middle just, of this air attack right. and starts. R- randomly saying biblical prophecy to uh, to Kirk, who, as America's number one news reporter, says to himself, "Oh, crazy dude in a fucking desert in the middle of a you know a- an air raid. That's probably the most important thing I should put my camera on. Let this guy tell me about the Bible for a minute, rather than you know getting video of all these exploding airplanes above me." Right, and no one thinks it's peculiar either. No one's like, hey man, where's that weird medieval knight guy come from? Because he had to be wearing that before. It's not like he's a guy who went crazy because of the airstrike and put on that uniform. Right. He was wearing that beforehand. If he is corporeal, are we supposed to believe that he was like hanging out somewhere in like a porta potty being like, all right, who? All right, any minute now. There we go. The explosions have started. Just got to wait for Kirk to get up here. <laughs> Should have brought my phone. <laughs> Could have texted. So I was playing a fun game while watching this movie. Because uh, I knew, the only thing I knew about the movie is that it has to do with the rapture. So the fun game was guessing why, guessing who wasn't going to get raptured and why. And I decided Kirk Cameron doesn't get raptured because he doesn't do what any normal person would have done. Grab the crazy old man and bring him into the bunker to safety. <laughs> no, he just lets him wander off. No, he, does, yeah, he, just lets, he just lets him wander off to die because there's <laughs> airplanes and bombs falling out. So, yeah. So, periodically, just whenever you meet a new character, you, when you're watching this movie, just be like, that's why they don't get raptured. Because... What did that person do? Right. Yeah, what, what's wrong with this guy? Uh, Play along at home. What did they do? What did they do? That means they don't <laughs> The get rapture game. It's like the, uh, the, uh, the left behind version of Seen It. Yes. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pause the tape now. What did Kirk Cameron do? <laughs> a, rape a bunch of people. That's it. He raped a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure B was going to be this fucking movie. Yeah. And now we uh we cut to our other heroes, the uh, pilot and his family over in Chicago. Yeah, exactly. At, at which point... So this is the first thing we see is the family where they're fighting over the TV remote, but then that immediately gets creepy when they come in and uh, the she's like, so what did you learn about su- in Sunday school? And the kid's like, I learned about impaled heads on spikes. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. I get it. See, I'm convinced that there was an atheist in the writer's room that kept sneaking shit in and just chuckling to himself because they didn't, like, nobody picked up on that. Oh, absolutely. There's no question that, like, my ancestor was in the writer's room just being like, what if he wrote about spikes? And everyone was like, praise Lord, I don't get it, but sure, if you think people will laugh. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but I knew, yeah, that kid, I knew that kid was going to get raptured because he said the word Sunday school. So yeah, the game works yeah. both mm-hmm. ways. 
Oh yeah, everyone everyone tells you they're about to get raptured in this movie by like pointing to a crucifix on their chest and being like, "Wink." <laughs> Very clear. You have no questions about who's going to be who. Right. Then the reverend comes to visit and kisses his friend's child on the head, which I found very upsetting. <laughs> it was very inappropriate. Yeah, There's no <laughs> It's just like, "Oh, hey guys, so good to see you. Reverend Paul, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. give me a little give me a little mm-hmm. And that's <laughs> why he doesn't get raptured. Just touch your lips gently to mine. Just gently. We don't even need to kiss. Just touch them. Just mm. so okay. So we're already playing. We're playing the left behind game on the uh, on the reverend. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would guess kid. pedophilia. Like even if I'd not seen the guy before. Yeah, that's cheating. You heard the word reverend. Chloe, yeah. the daughter. <laughs> Chloe, the daughter doesn't get raptured because she has a nose ring. Yep. Yep. yep clearly, they Fact. they bring that up right away because it's topical. <laughs> and the pilot has a job, so he must be a bad guy, atheist that. Yeah. Doesn't get raptured. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I already know from the Nick Cage movie what what's wrong with him. So unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be spoiling it if I told you. Exactly. There is a great moment though where she he's about to leave the house and she goes, "I love you," and he goes, "Yeah, me too." <laughs> At which point, I just went rough. That's yeah. rough. <laughs> That's rough. I really like spending time with you too, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> When? Yeah. Oh, I don't know that I'm ready to go there yet. <laughs> Anyways, take care of our two kids. Bye. <laughs> when I first saw the pilot, I paused the movie because I was convinced it was John Travolta. <laughs> and then I realized that this guy's career has been like either as John Travolta's stunt double or like every callback he's ever gotten. He like looks around the room, sees John Travolta and is like, well, not fucking getting this one. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> calls his agent he goes you know what just don't send me if you're gonna send john just don't send me if you're gonna well you never know they might be going for something they're never going for something else other than travolta they're never doing it you promised me Battlestar. <laughs> oh wow what a career when that would have been an upgrade but it would have been so Chloe runs out after dad and they get into the fight or whatever where she's sort of defending Jesus even though she's a hellbound atheist with a nose ring too. And she says to the dad, she's like, well, it's not like she's hurting anyone. And uh, I just started writing down all of the various harms of religious zealotry in my notes as we right. uh, carried on. It's not on like she's hurting scene. anyone 30 seconds after the kid talks about hearing about heads on yes, spikes. Right. <laughs> Yeah, not like she's hurting anyone, except this family's falling apart. <laughs> right, as as right. by the fact I'm yelling at my father in the driveway. <laughs> because he's going to work. Except for the fact that we're having a screaming fight about your abandonment of her neuroses and psychotic behavior. But other than that, though, it's just fine. Yeah. We get, she's we not, get a lot more she's cookies. not physically hurting anyone anymore. Anymore. <laughs> No, we're going to save that for God who's about to kill babies, but not yet. I'm getting ahead of ourselves. First, we have to switch over to the GNN Studios where Buck Williams works. Sounds like a real place. Yeah, yeah. So then he he deep throat meeting someone, which Mm. is basically, you know, he's getting a call from his informant. But his informant is fucking crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like your crazy uncle who had a bad divorce and now only talks about 9-11 and the reptilians crazy. Right. And they, in, they meet each other with a hug, which I gotta tell you, <laughs> your deep throat-esque informant, you do not meet him with a hug. Generally speaking, no. That's right. not a good sign. But that, that, he's right. In the universe of this movie, this character who is being played as though he's crazy and acting as though he's crazy is a reliable source of information. That's the universe this movie inhabits. The guy who's like, man, they're going to get you. And the whole government center together and I keep a disc in my watch. And blah, 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 blah. I put it slowly up my butt. That way they can't find it. And you're just like, oh, okay. This is our source of information. He's our foreshadowing. Yes. At which point we also learn, this is amazing, we learn that the Jewish man's name from the beginning of the movie is Chaim Rosenswag. <laughs> which is, is, which is the probably, I mean, it's not the most anti-Semitic thing I've ever heard, but it's up there. That they were just like, what's a Jewish name? Alright, everyone throw it out. Chaim Rosenswag. Good, done, there moving is, on. His is. name's Chaim Rosenswag. If there was a Jewish version of black exploitation, that would be every character's name. <laughs> right. Hey there, it's me, Chaim Rosenstank. Rosenstank! <laughs> <laughs> Shmulamite, yeah. Right. <laughs> so then we cut to the TV show, and now we have seen this character twice now. 
There is a character, a female character who's like his tech girl on the go something, mm-hmm. who has something on her fucking forehead. And that's why that, she's not going to get raptured, because she has a weird that, thing on her forehead. <laughs> that nobody fucking acknowledges in this movie. And I literally paused the movie, got my fiance, and was like, there's something on that girl's forehead, right? Because I was like, what, <laughs> is, what if it's me? You know, I watched all of War Room, and I was just like, maybe I do there just halfway through. I was just like, ah! and just uh, something snapped in the wrong place. And now right. every third person I just look has a spiral on her forehead, never gets acknowledged in the entire fucking film. And it's not subtle either. If this is supposed to be no. like, because I was like, oh, it's supposed to be the mark of the beast. Like, later she's going to turn out to be a traitor. Nope. At least not in this fucking movie she's not. So, and so... If it's supposed to be subtle, if it's supposed to be foreshadowing for something later on, it's not. That If I met this girl, the first thing I would say would be like, oh, hi, my name's Eli. What the fuck is going on with your forehead? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to address that right now. Yes, it's kind of like a little henna tattoo she's got going on there. Or it's not little at all. It's it's like this bigger than her eyes. And it, yeah, and they just act like, you know, yeah, people have shit on their head like that. It's New York. They're all Satanists. She, she's not, she's and the reality is you wouldn't have to ask her what is that thing on your head. She has it on her head because she wants to tell you what it is. Like, yes. it's that kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> yeah. the, I put this on my head so that every conversation I have with someone new begins with, oh, this? <laughs> <laughs> my magical spiral cane and my tattoo well, on my face? Let me tell you all you about, about my uh, my thoughts about this thing okay, on my forehead whatever. and it's why I deal. have it and what it means to me. <laughs> Oh, swipe oh, left. Oh, it's my spirit eye. and uh... <laughs> That's rough. We've all been on that date. <laughs> We've all been on that date. Oh, this? And you're just like, oh, check. Oh, so that's Dang. your whole thing. Oh. That's, that's you in a nutshell. That's, huh? that's, all that's all of you. That's all of you. The necessity of talking about you wasn't coming quickly enough, so you burned something into your face. <laughs> <laughs> I just found that a lot of conversations didn't begin with, what is that? <laughs> and it wasn't about me, so I just I just snipped it in the butt. Just snipped it in the butt. Now I should m- mention too that this scene when they're in the uh, new studio too is also where we subtly foreshadow the um, the Antichrist, and and that's how subtle it is is that we have no idea at this point that this guy is the Antichrist, except we know exactly that this guy is going to be the Antichrist because he's got a European accent. Yep, that's right. why he, he looks- didn't get raptured because he sounds vaguely German. Oh, gotcha, right, gotcha. Exactly. The actor I'd like to point out is from Vancouver, so they couldn't get real Europeans. Understood. Apparently. But they're tough. Yeah. They're hard to come by. He also looks uncomfortably <laughs> like Vladimir Putin. Yes. Like I, And in watching this movie, I was like, uh, guys, Putin's pretty crazy. Like, I would not make him the bad guy of a movie. I would just steer clear. Because I, if you were like, oh, Putin killed all three producers of this movie with his bare hands, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. don't do that. That's, That's your own fault. He's one of our crazies. <laughs> Leave him and Kim Jong-un alone. Like, they've got their own thing going on. When you make up a villain, give him a scar so that everyone knows it's not Vladimir Putin. <laughs> this guy, he kind of looked like Putin fucked Ozymandias from Watchmen. Yeah, or, right. yeah, or maybe maybe a young Putin. Maybe that's yeah, what... exactly. He looked like a young. He looked like Putin's gay brother. Just like, no, oh, Vlad, are you wrestling people again with your own made-up martial art? Why can't we ever just go sopping, Vlad? Let's just go sopping. You'll feel so much better. Did you poison that reporter? I know you did. <laughs> Vladdy, what did we say about using eye messages? I'll tweet something mean at him. Hey, looking kind of bald. The character's name is Nikolai Carpathia. Mm. Uh-huh. I immediately knew he was a bad guy, and I'm pretty sure he is the great great ancestor of Vigo the Carpathian from Ghostbusters 2. Oh, interesting. Shit. Yeah. Although they're on the same timeline, so maybe they're the same person? Could be. Could be. <laughs> oh. That actually would make this movie better. Wow. Mind wow. Blown. A throw from Ghostbusters 2 would have made this movie better. That's amazing. <laughs> exactly. It's all, in, it's all in the same universe. <laughs> Jews and Muslims living together. Mass hysteria. Yeah. No good. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, we realize they're, they're watching the video of the knight who said knee or the you chose poorly. Uh-huh. Uh, and he was speaking ancient Aramaic, but somehow Kirk Cameron understood it. Great. Right. Mm-hmm. But now doesn't. Which, Right. Yeah, right. He's, he's Which a you never tongue, go like, back apparently. to or explain. Or anything. <laughs> he's a parcel. Yeah, he's a parcel tongue. We learn in the oh. scene. That's cool. <laughs> Interesting. Later on <laughs> in the movie, there's going to be something with Jewish symbols on it. He needs to whisper, get a basilisk fang, and stab Vladimir Putin in the chest. <laughs> 
all the other kids at the news report are going to be like, only bad reporters speak Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a better movie. So then we cut to London where um, we see evil men plotting world peace. Yeah. In yep. the most confusing scene ever, because they're plotting world peace. The words coming out of their faces are a plot for world peace, but the tone <laughs> is that of nefarious evil. They're like, Super oh, sinister, exactly. we'll get all of the seeds, and then we'll feed the world. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like oh, evil uh, banters. Like they're talking about, they're talking about often some guy, you know, and 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 the the line is his. Well, we'll have to take, uh, you know, we'll have to get rid of his pension, his health benefits, his parking yeah. space. He'll have to forfeit his four hundred one k. If but we'll offer him a really anymore. nice severance package. <laughs> and can you can you can you write a good letter of rec for him? Because I want him to land on his feet. Thanks. I guess we'll have to put his job on Monster dot com. <laughs> Maybe take out an ad in Forbes magazine. <laughs> By the way, they're plotting in that room. They're plotting in that room, and I am entirely on their side. Whatever they want to do, they kill a crazy reporter guy. But if that results in the entire world being fed and 30,000 children a year no longer starving to death, uh-huh. I'm all, I'm for it. I yeah. will trade crazy method <laughs> reporter. I was, I was sitting there, and I was being like, well, I mean, I, I don't approve of their methods, but honestly, if it was put to a vote, they were like, yeah, we got to kill method reporter, but we'll end world hunger. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. sorry, method reporter. You got voted off the island for <laughs> Take one for the team. <laughs> At which point we have the fantastic line, he found it hard to give up his meddling ways. This is the level of dialogue we right. have in this movie. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh-huh. And there's some finger steepling, some sinister finger steepling that goes with that. He yeah, found exactly. it hard. Perhaps we should help him out. Can we I think we form a support group for meddlers? <laughs> <laughs> we could have an intervention. Whoa. Let's just talk about this calmly, but first, evil. <laughs> yeah, so these this is when he sort of now we cut to the plane. Yeah, we do. Right. Now, I want to point out very quickly to both Devin and Heath after seeing this, if you had a, a a thought in your mind during this plane scene, holy shit if they could just take this one scene and make that into an entire movie. <laughs> don't worry, that movie is out there for you and it has Nick Cage. Yes, this one scene contains Virtually everything from the Nick Cage movie. Yes, one scene, uh, but it lacks several things that the Nick Cage movie had. For instance, super hoary stewardess. Right. And the movie that I want to get made, by the way, patent pending, <laughs> Midget and a Muslim. It's an HBO miniseries. Great. It comes out next year after season two of True Detective was so disappointing. I got a nice big contract on it. Um, Matthew McConaughey plays the Muslim. Woody Harrelson <laughs> plays the midget. It's going to be really good, guys. Check it out. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but at one point they're just like panning around the passengers and there's a guy who is like holding a pillow and like he looks right at the camera like he just got caught doing something. He's clearly hiding his boner with this pillow. Yes. <laughs> like 100%. He's just like, oh, look at me. Well- there's a great moment. The very first thing that happens is the stewardess is walking up and down the plane, and there's a woman with a – first of all, this plane is filled with children. Oh, this was some worst. kind of school trip. There are, there are seven children for every adult on this plane, <laughs> at least according to this first shot. And the stewardess is walking down the plane, and this woman is holding a baby, which starts to cry, and she hands her a pillow. And in my head, I just wanted to ADR over a line like, here's the pillow to smother your baby. <laughs> <laughs> that gets to be too much for you. Disturbing you the say, other passengers. It's time to end this child's life. <laughs> and that's why she doesn't get raptured, because she wants to know. smother babies with pillows. giving out smother pillows. <laughs> and again, the names in this movie, all of the names in this movie, and I know I've mentioned that before, all the names in this movie are like someone making something up yep. because they need a name really quickly. Just like, <laughs> oh, uh, so you're the pilot. What's your name? Ray F- Rayford? Steel? <laughs> Shark? Shark man, fight, <laughs> dance, blades cracking, blades cracking, hold fire. Are you just saying scary words? Fireman, scratch call. 
<laughs> like he's trying to intimidate the devil. Well, I mean, let's not get near Rayford Branst here because, you know, he'll fuck us up. None of those are even real names. It's like someone took halves of real names and just smashed them together. That guy's a fucking crazy person. <laughs> Keep away from him. So then everyone gets raptured. Yep. Here comes the rapture. We've waited long enough, folks. And we know this because an old lady wakes up, notices her husband is not in the plane seat next to him, and assumes he's disappeared. Yeah, assumes she's just her first thought is he's been raptured. Yeah. Yeah. Which everyone on this plane <laughs> freaks out way too fast. Except right? for this old lady. No, she's pretty calm because she knows she's going to die soon. Yeah. But everybody else, everybody else is like freaking out. Like, I, I am not a parent. And I imagine that if I looked over and my child was not where my child was, I would be nervous. But if I'm in a plane, like, I'm, I'm going to go like, well, how far could my child really be? <laughs> like, closed environment. Yeah. There's just not, there's not. You know, I'm I, in a steel tube in the sky. I'm not super I'm worried. Not, I'm not sad that they've they've been kidnapped. Like, right, exactly. <laughs> Which one of you kidnapped my baby? There's just a kid wearing different surrounded clothes surrounded by seat hundreds next to you? of witnesses who have nothing to do, right? But <laughs> look around and witness things. Surely I'll be able to find my child. But uh, no, everyone immediately like goes full berserk. One guy tries to jump out of the plane. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I know where they are. They're out there in the sky. <laughs> so now, of course, we do also have to see what's going on on the ground. So we cut from the plane to uh, Chloe, uh, Rayford's daughter with the other realistic name in the movie. And she's in the middle of leaving the worst voicemail ever. She's on the phone with her mom and she's like, hey, mom, sorry, I couldn't make it to the thing with the thing. And she comes across a car accident. And then she just screams and screeches the tires and hangs up the phone. And I'm like, what a bitch message to leave on mom's uh, voicemail, right? Yeah, exactly. No, Not just to be like, oh, mom, one second. I got to get off the phone. Or to yeah. call back and be like, don't worry, I'm fine. Right. All the cars in the world crashed. And again, <laughs> this, is one, this is something that occurred to me again through this, like, through watching the first Left Behind, is that this movie assumes a lot of people get raptured. Well, but it's not that many in this one either. They actually say the number. It's a... Uh... 142 million people. I, I, I don't I don't remember where it says that, but... Uh, it says it on the bottom of the TV right. when the Antichrist <laughs> okay. is giving a press conference. So if 142 conference. people vanish, that would be like one out of every 800 cars would yeah. crash. No, right? <laughs> so Think about the number of people got raptured on that fucking plane. That's insanity. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's like all the good people like the were there. Holy people in the <laughs> yeah, goddamn exactly. world. I mean, all that's the, not even all the kids, though. That's not even close. It's not even close to all the Christians. It's like two billion Christians at the time. Right, right. So that's not Are even that, all the Christian kids got raptured. Yeah. So a realistic version of that scene would have just been her driving along and being like, oh, fucking traffic. Drunk drivers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just, hey, Mom, sorry I didn't make the... Oh, one second. Oh, someone left their car by the side of the road. Weird. All right, anyways, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> A realistic left behind where only point zero 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 one percent of the population goes missing. Everyone else just goes about their day. Yeah, nobody Do you knows. Steve, the crazy Christian guy. No. Well, he disappeared. Oh, weird. Hmm, he probably like went to go do a religious camp or something. Right? Like they have camps. Do they have camps? <laughs> but instead, everyone vanishes, and it's just a bloody fucking mess. Everyone except for her has a head wound. Yeah. Virtually everyone in this scene is walking around. Nobody just scratched their arm or anything. Everybody's got a head wound. And of course, as soon as she gets out to just wander aimlessly, somebody steals her car because now that only the evil people are left, nobody's Kia Sportage is safe. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Now, now that the godly are no longer among us, I can take this Honda Accord for myself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <It's exactly. laughs> mm, come to me, you sweet Toyota Camry. <laughs> What is this, a 93, 94? Ooh, this is going in daddy's collection. <laughs> and she, she runs into the mother who's missing her baby and then goes to look in the car as if the mother hasn't thought maybe the baby's <laughs> in the car somewhere. <laughs> maybe he's, did you check I wanted right, it right so right badly to just be okay. back there. Yeah. Just a baby uh, right. jerking off here. Your kid's right here. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I just, whenever I can't see him, I start screaming and I- I have no object after. permanence, so if I, <laughs> if I turn my head, I just, I just forget they exist. Oh my baby! <laughs> oh, I was blinking. Never mind. Never mind, guys. I was just blinking. Uh, why do you drive a car? Never mind. I'm in a- <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so then we jump back to the plane where, where basically the conversation goes like this. The pilot says, I have a sane idea, and everyone else on the plane is like, I will eat the eyes out of your skull! <laughs> <laughs> He's basically like, why don't we just sit down and we'll look for all the people who are missing, at which point everyone's like, no, let's rush the cabin because we'll all fly the plane together. <laughs> right. No, it's easier to find people if you're all screaming and running in circles. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. As we learn over and over again in every cut scene from this point on. Right. Uh, but, so then he turns on the oxygen to put everyone to sleep, which I don't know. He... This is a thing sure. that happens in both the movies. So is this a thing on planes? I think There's this a makes put- sense. I was actually impressed by by yeah. the logic of it. I think you drop the oxygen mask and everyone's like, well, I, I, I have a thing to do now. Like, I have to put this on or else I might die. So everyone right, goes and sits right. down and puts the oxygen mask on. But does the it's oxygen mask put you to sleep? No, is that I think how- it's just, I think it's no, just no, like it, it just you- gives them something to do and makes them sit. Like, you can't, like, walk yeah. around with one of those things. It's tethered. But then everyone falls asleep. Well, maybe it's been a very hard day, Eli. It's been a tough day for them. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that I, I honestly did think at that moment I was like, "Oh, wow, that that's kind of clever," because they did the same thing in in the other movie, only stupid. Like Nick Cage actually took all the air out of it to to knock everybody unconscious or whatever in the other movie. But I, I actually thought that was a kind of clever moment, and that's when I realized. The people who made the Nick Cage movie watched this whole thing and they were like, you know what? That was the only clever moment in the whole movie. Let's make a whole movie about that. That's that's right, how exactly. that other movie came to be. What would you say the peak of the left behind the movie was? I don't know. When everyone sits down and breathes. Great. Yeah. <laughs> that exactly. deserves its own film. Can we get Nick Cage? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You haven't called anyone. Just trust me. We can. <laughs> The other day, I filmed my daughter's ballet recital, and Nick wandered out on stage. Hey, everybody, it's me. You have to give me money now. Everyone line up at the back. Quarters, nickels, pennies, anything you could spare. Just throw it in the sock. (laughs) Who here saw Wicker Man? (laughs) So they land the plane. Well, at first, first he declares loudly to his co-pilot, we're turning back. Like, yeah, no, sure. Half of your, <laughs> like, like half of the plane has disappeared. Like, you, yeah, you don't Dude, just continue just gonna, on. Just, just keep going to just Malaysia. like we forgot the coffee or something. <laughs> yeah. Half the plane vanished. Come on, man, be a team player. <laughs> <laughs> These people got to get to Heathrow. Come on now. <laughs> so they end up at the airport. And the airport, again, because the airport has martial law. Like, there are soldiers everywhere. People are yep. screaming and rioting. Now, listen, I've been on JFK on a weekend, so it's fairly accurate whether or not there's been an apocalypse. But <laughs> but generally speaking, people don't start, like, street brawling in the airport because of canceled flights, which is what you see in this movie. Right, yeah. and also there's a great shot. This There's something that this movie did that really bummed me out. I didn't care about the dead babies or the dead people, but there were a lot of abandoned pets in this movie. Which yeah. is in direct conflict and, with the film All Dogs Go to Heaven. Uh, pretty sure all dogs get raptured. Yeah, yeah, there's a big theological inconsistency in this movie. Yeah. And that's it right there. The, the third one. sequel to All Gods Go to Heaven is All Dogs Get Raptured. And let me tell you, it is not for kids. It is not for kids. When the rape lizards come out later on in that movie, it's just weird. It's a weird moment. Disney was going through a rough time. Yeah, Cancer well, yeah. had reached his brain. Um. <laughs> so yeah, there, it, there's riots. There's parents sleeping on their empty baby carriages, yes. just like waiting for the baby. <laughs> like maybe if we just hang out here, he'll come back. Right. This was just. This is where he saw us last. He so can't lift his it. head, but I'm sure he just wandered off. Right. <laughs> he probably went to Aunt Annie's to get one of those new cinnamon cr- toast pretzels. You know, he could just Aunt- roll. So he may have just rolled away. Right. And then this is the point where the. uh the Antichrist comes forward and proposes nothing but calm and sanity and peace and care for each other. What an asshole. At which point I wrote, I wrote, man, the Antichrist really has some great ideas. <laughs> if, they're tra- if the point of this movie was to turn me against the Antichrist, they did a bad job. <laughs> 
this Antichrist the entire time is much more likable than all of the characters I'm supposed to be rooting for because he wants world priests and to feed the one, hungry. One of the best world leaders I've ever heard. Right, yeah. like every Christian movie seems to do that. Though. Like, the, the devil is always my favorite character. I think in the War Room, the devil is my favorite character, and Miracle sure. Man, the devil is my favorite character. And they, if if they'd put the devil, I mean, I didn't like anybody in uh, No Greater Love, but if the devil had been there, I would have liked him. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The devil probably would have told him, been like, hey, man, you know, you can't get back together with her. That's not a healthy thing. You know what <laughs> right. I'm saying? You got to take, <laughs> take some time for you. Take some time for you. All right? Let's well, go to David Blondie Buster's. Come on. I got one of those power cards. <laughs> it's half off Wednesdays. Let's do it. <laughs> so then he he goes up to the pilot and he's like, hey, man, remember we were on the same plane. Walk me through emergency exits yes. behind security <laughs> zones, which indeed he does. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> And and not only that, but let me drive to your home with you and hang out with you now because right. we're buddies. Because we're buddies because we were on that same plane where all the people disappeared. Do you guys not again, make profound connections with every pilot on every plane you've been on? Because I, <laughs> I, like me, I got like 40 pilot friends. Just Always I'm on take a plane, you home to meet their daughters afterwards. I just afterwards, I'm just like, hey, thanks for getting me here safe, buddy. And then we, Can I come home with you? And then we hang out. <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember when I helped save your life? I want to fuck your daughter now. Let's go. Let's go do that. Can I come sleep in your home without telling anybody? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the the douchiest thing in this entire movie is Chloe comes home and uh, so I get the pilot guy, whatever whatever superhero name he has. He <laughs> apparently he, like takes off his blazer and like leaves it on the porch. <laughs> yeah, right. There is a huge cultural shift now. You cannot leave clothes on the floor in this world anymore that is like the worst thing you can do to people so like chloe comes home picks it up and like immediately assumes well my dad's gone too i guess because right. like how could but you he not was only that? wearing a blazer which is upsetting <laughs> he was around naked like except for his Duck. blazer yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, dad was not having a good time of it, or was having a good time of it when he disappeared. But like, if you, yeah, if you walked into my bedroom right now, you'd think that like forty people got rapture. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Devin was having a party, and then everyone got rapture. But most of them were just wearing very dirty underwear. <laughs> So yeah, now we get to the actual the, the the actual forty minutes of him in the bedroom crying that we were alluding to before when he comes right. home and realizes that his 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 wife is gone, and of course he he like gets angry and he throws the Bible at the mirror because that's clever. But by the way, this is my theory on the throwing the Bible at the mirror thing. They shoot it with the camera facing right at the mirror, so Ray Rayford Steele becomes left-handed. Who else is left-handed? Satan, exactly. <gasps> Also, Rayford Steele. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Also, what happens when you break a mirror? Seven years bad luck. Oh, oh shit. shit! That's coming Jet up. Fuel doesn't burn that hot. <laughs> it's all clicking for me now. Now, I want to point out though that like his his he starts reading the Bible at this point after he breaks the mirror with it. So his solution when there's all these pressing problems, your your family is missing and everything, is to look through the densest longest, least comprehensible book on the fucking planet. Man, maybe there's something in here. Right, uh, and this is a theme of Christian movies. Is that no. Yeah, that everyone goes through the Bible. Like, they're like, hmm, I need guidance. And they open up the Bible, and they're just like, oh, there's some good advice. I, I challenge anyone to open up the Bible, and unless you accidentally find Ecclesiastes, you won't find anything remotely resembling advice. Well, no. It'll just be like, and then he went forth to the Blackonites, and they fought the Blackonites, and then rape, murder, rape, rape, said the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way he opened the book and was like, right, uh, there we go. Well, he goes, this he look. opens it to the first page. He goes, in the beginning, and then he goes, it's a little late for that, and <laughs> skips ahead. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna read the whole book, like, read the whole goddamn book. Don't yeah, just, fucking spoiler alert. Don't just, don't <laughs> just jump don't ahead. Don't just jump to when they all stab Jon Snow. Ugh. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> Someone out there is so mad at me yeah. right now. Oh, just yeah. like, oh, fuck you! <laughs> You're right. We get 18 one-star reviews. Don't worry. He's probably going to come back because so many people have come back. So don't worry about right. it. He'll be exactly. fine. I was going to um, say, if you managed to miss that on social... I don't even watch that fucking movie and I knew he got... Uh, so, you know, like, hey, look. I want 
It's yeah, also, I, I want to point out one thing. He goes, he thinks his son is in his bed because there's a teddy bear under the covers, mm-hmm. yeah. which means he thought his son was the size of a That's teddy bear. Not even close. Also, what ten year old is still sleeping with a giant teddy bear? Like that. I have a giant. The same teddy one bear. that goes to Bible school and learns about heads on spikes. That was a fucked up little kid. That's true. I'm glad he's gone. <laughs> I also want to point this out too. There's a scene uh, before. Uh, Chloe gets home where Kurt Cameron's standing out in the, on the lawn trying to like make phone calls or whatever. And the guys come, the, the, the military that's patrolling all of suburbia now is, is driving down the road and they're, they're warning everybody that a curfew's in effect. And they actually say curfew violators will be shot on sight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. how bad it's gotten you now. You can't have that policy. <laughs> <laughs> seems like seems like overkill to me. You can't you know? ask yeah, questions or in the morning. You. The streets just littered with dead bodies. <laughs> right. Sorry, Again, guys, we you cannot emphasize nine, enough, so. guys. Curfew shot on sight. <laughs> We've had way too many people die, so we're going to kill as many more. We have a feeling. We heard something about a thief in the night, so we've just <laughs> gone ahead and shot anybody in the night. <laughs> Although it is America, so it would just all be black bodies. <laughs> all these white people walking around having late night strolls. Some black guy next to them is walking his daughter to the hospital and they're like, pip, 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 pip. We said everyone who was there after the curfew. What about them? Oh, no, they're, they're, they're on our side. They're white. <laughs> Not only do they say all citizens will be shot on sight, but then Kirk Cameron immediately walks out after the curf- yeah. curfew, and they're like, "Well, I mean, except for Kirk, I wanted them to come over the last interview, <laughs> except for Kirk Cameron, he's he's fine." But everybody else- after this guy will be shot on sight. <laughs> starting now, one starting morning. now, though. You guys get. I warm. left the house at the same time as him. Do I get shot? You're fine. No. <laughs> but that's it. We mean it. And again, more abandoned dogs. I feel like that was, this movie was like, well, you know what? All of our characters are super unlikable and people aren't really going to connect with the whole everyone in the world dying thing. So we should show sad puppies. <laughs> <laughs> the works. Sarah McLaughlin technique for yeah, Christianity. Right, exactly. <laughs> in the arms of the <laughs> angels, literally, like literally the angels. <laughs> Took them. This song means different things now. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go back to uh, evil headquarters there, so that we can learn right. that nobody with European accents got raptured. Yep. Right. Exactly. <laughs> at which point, it, not only did they not get raptured, but it didn't affect their plans at all. He comes in. He's like, "Hey, man. <laughs> right. Now that everyone's been raptured, does that change our plan?" And he's like, "No, oh, no, not at, not all. at all. <laughs> we use this to our advantage." <laughs> He says, he says, no, our operatives are still in place. What operatives? They have a team of atheist spy assassins doing like secular humanitarian aid, giving out food. Exactly. Feeding, Feeding the, the world. Worst movie ever. Feeding the world. The most evil plan yeah. of all. Don't you see? Right. Now people won't die hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible Bond movie. Bunch of evil henchmen from Doctors Without Borders yelling at Sean Connery to stop skiing away from our flying snowmobiles. We're just trying to give you this aid money. Just stop. <laughs> just let, let us give you this food. You'll never money. give me any aid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then uh, Buck is sleeping on the couch and Chloe holds him up with a vase. Yep, smart. <laughs> yeah. She just grabs a vase and she's like, I've got it. At which point I wrote in my notes, guns don't kill people, vases kill people. (laughs) I wrote down, if Buck Williams was black, this movie is over right now, or at least his character arc is. Pip, 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 left behind. (laughs) (laughs) Credits. Yeah, he looks up from his sleep to see someone screaming at him with a vase and he goes, are you going to brain me with that vase? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Pretty I, dense fucking question. And Don't he goes, brain me, man. <laughs> he goes, how's your dad? To which she should have responded, oh, he's naked and watching home movies of his dead wife and son. <laughs> not okay. Okay, he's not doing okay. <laughs> which, I, it's weird. This moment, I don't know why, but the first Left Behind movie, it, you know, because they didn't use the word dead in the first Left Behind movie, but they use it a lot in this movie. And it really hit home for me, like, what a weird fucking mythology that, like, those people are all dead. Yeah. Like, the right. baby and the mom are, they're not just, like, cause in my head they were just zapped up to heaven, but they're, they're dead. So it was just this weird moment of real reality and empathy with these characters where I was like, fuck, they're dead. 
That's right, so sad. Right. So that's actually my favorite thing about this movie is that it forces you to look at Christian mythology and say, okay, guys, if you're right, this is, you know, this is real. So, like, first of all, shut up about the apocalypse until all the airplanes start getting shot down by magical god brimstone over Israel. But secondly... Your hero, your guy is going to start this off by killing all the good people and the babies. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's the first, the first, the the good guy from this movie. The bad guys from this movie want to feed all the people that are left on the planet. Uh And the good guys from this movie want, want to root for the evil demon that stole and murdered all the good people. And left all the dogs abandoned and orphaned. Exactly. So then we cut to Chloe, who's just chilling at the abandoned school the way you do. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, like. Just like you can't leave your clothes on the ground anymore, like you also can't like hide somewhere and not tell anybody where you are. <laughs> right. That's just a what huge a dick, dick move. move to do. Yeah, exactly. And, and he then, finds and then, her and somehow. She she justifies it by saying like she like was checking to see if they were just hiding at the school. <laughs> and she's right like, wow, so they're like the biggest assholes ever. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and the son pop out. Gotcha! <laughs> I bet you went crazy, took your shirt off, and read the entire Bible, didn't you? <laughs> he always does. Jesus. You laughed at me for being religious. <laughs> <laughs> and this is when she also takes a moment to guilt trip her dad. She's like, she was happiest when you were home. And I wrote in my notes, not the time, bro. Not the time. <laughs> yeah. So- Which, by the way, at this point, Rayford Blampflerk, um, <laughs> you can change out of your pilot costume. Yes, right. Yeah. It's one of those yes. one of those guys now, who's buddy. a doctor who wears a stethoscope and it's like, are you on your way to work? No, I just want people to know I'm a doctor. It's like, hey, bro, you can just wear a nice button down and some slacks. So we get to the house where the uh, where the uh, sn- uh, the um, crazy conspiracy guy was, yeah, and he's Dirk. Dead. Dirk has a nice place though. Like Dirk's oh, yeah, place is yeah, he was really nice. Right. Like it's cluttered. But like not even that badly cluttered and like it's got multiple floors. Like this is like a several million dollar condo in yeah, New York. Yeah, exactly. He you feel like he comes from old money like he was mm-hmm. grandfathered in, maybe rent controlled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to you know find that much space in New York City, shit, yeah. So then he takes his super futuristic computer watch DVD whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. So now um, he great. has all the secrets and the plans and stuff. Right, exactly. Which then then Apparently that sniper has just been sitting there waiting for days for someone to go see if Dirk was dead. What were his instructions? All right, so you kill Dirk and then you wait there literally forever. (laughs) If anyone discovers the body. Whatever you do, don't burn down the building. That's too easy. (laughs) Just wait there and snipe through the most inconvenient. You think he would have found a better spot than the alley next door? I want a movie about that guy's week. Just waiting for Kirk Cameron to show up where you know he's what? just like, He was oh. just walking by getting groceries. <laughs> and he just saw he Kirk like, Cameron pull in and was like, fuck, I probably got to do something about this. Uh, I got to shoot that guy. I got to shoot that guy. <laughs> do I even have a gun? I do. I do. Oh, good. good, good it's in, glove. It's in the glove compartment. Quick, get him. <laughs> but he doesn't shoot him, though. He, he like, holds the gun on him menacingly even when he stands in front of the window for a second. But he doesn't quite shoot because there's not enough suspense yet. And mm-hmm. instead he shoots the computer? Yeah, which they left on. He could just wipe the computer, whatever evidence. Well, and, and besides that, like, okay, he's like, like he's going to shoot Kirk, and then Kirk wanders to where he can't shoot him, and then he starts looking at the computer, and he's like, oh, fuck, I better shoot that computer now so he doesn't read anything off the computer. You're going to kill him! If you're right. going to shoot the guy, he can read all of the secret plans now. You're going to fucking kill him! Yeah, go ahead and let him re- read it to him. You're going to burn right. <laughs> This Yeah, this this guy basically learned how to be an assassin from playing the Metal Gear Solid games where you shoot one guy and just wait for the other troops to come by and find him. I shoot that guy and wait for the troops to just a pile of ever increasing bodies until the entire world's population is just stuffed into that New York brownstone with him standing outside. All right. enough space. Beautiful apartment. Beautiful apartment. Lovely. Do we know if that's open? Because we've been thinking our lease is up next year and I just want to... I mean, yeah, we, can, we, we can investigate it. Previous owner murdered by Antichrist. This is what happens when you talk to New Yorkers. <laughs> What's the rent on that, you think? All right, so now we go to the empty church where um, where Theo from Die Hard is uh, screaming at Jesus. 
Right. The black guy yeah. and the cross are having an ugly breakup. Yes. Yep. <laughs> like where you're at a party and all of a sudden people start to have a screaming breakup and you're like, oh, we should go. No, no, no. Don't you move. I want them to see this. <laughs> I want them to see. Oh, I think you and the cross should sort of be alone. No, no, no. You tell your side of the story. Yeah. Eli, you get this. You get this. It is shocking to me that the church is empty, that the rapture can't boost church attendance. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. If there, if the rapture happened right now, I, there's like four churches on my block, and I am going to all of them. <laughs> if everyone disappears and it's the rapture, like I'm gonna get good with God. I feel like that's a good move. Yeah. Well, apparently, apparently. not, because everyone tries that shit and it does not work. Nope. They're still left behind. Yeah. Then he asks for one more chance, like he's your buddy who's gonna drunk text his ex. Yeah. He's like, no, man, give me my phone. I just want to ask what went wrong. I just want to. I just. <laughs> I just want to ask what went wrong. I think it'd been funny if God had given him another chance and just raptured him right there. <laughs> Zoop! <laughs> <laughs> Credits. <laughs> uh, so then they take a prayer break. Yep, uh, and we're do. back in New York with Forehead, forehead Girl, which mm-hmm. he d- describes someone trying to kill him, and it's hilarious. Everyone's like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> And and of course, this is where we learn why the forehead girl got left behind because they're lesbians. Her and the other girl were lesbians. Oh, is that said, so, or are we just? I'm I'm, I'm assuming, yeah. Cause oh I'm, yeah, I just assumed too. That's why I furiously started jerking off every time they were on screen. <laughs> but I I do but that every, every time, time that there's forehead two thing would come on. It would just yeah. kind of throw me <laughs> off. I'd get to staring at that. So. Mm-hmm. And this, of course, is also where we get them looking at the plans. Right, and the hacking where someone's hands just randomly slap at the keyboard and all of a sudden things <laughs> open typing. up. Exactly. <laughs> you're, just, you're just typing letters there. It doesn't do anything from this screen. You can't. That's not. So then we go back to the UN conspiracy, mm-hmm. right? There's, so they're, now they're at the UN where, again, this stewardess now has a job fairly high up in the UN. What she did beforehand that got her this job at the UN handed out peanuts. <laughs> that's a hell of a phone call. That's all I'm saying. But so basically they're trying to they're trying to convince the Jewish guy to let the UN feed the world mm-hmm. and he's refusing because his enemies might use it. <laughs> that's what he says. <laughs> what could your enemies do with the food? Listen, I know I know Jews are a little suspicious, and let's be honest, historically, with good reason, but I think the technology to feed the world is something that we can count not to fall into the wrong hands. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. How could you make that wrong? Exactly. Look at those well-fed Palestinians. My God, our greatest nightmare has come true. <laughs> Look at them. They're a little bit chubby. They're not even, they're a little bit chubby. <laughs> now they need to start doing cardio twice a week. My nightmare! <laughs> So then we cut back to, and again, this family, none of the scenes that we get with Ranford, Krampsnick, and Chloe <laughs> make any sense for the rest of this fucking, they don't do anything or say anything that matters. No! Uh-uh. I also think the uh, secret atheist writer snuck in here to get the whole, aren't you just using God as a crutch? I wrote that down. And his answer, of course, is yes. Yes, I am. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> Is there something oh, wrong with that? My wife and son are dead. I'm gonna you, I'm gonna lean on this crutch so hard it'll dig a hole in the goddamn floor. Did you have a question about that, or were you just curious? <laughs> I also love that the um, that the pastor that did get raptured left a um, like a break in case of rapture VHS video yes, telling him of course. What this <laughs> I wonder if he had a series of videos like, uh, this is in case I'm caught choking a hooker, but she gets a <laughs> knife out at the last moment. Uh, all right. Now, if you go to video 472-B, that's if I slip on the kitchen tiles and I catch my neck on the cook of the chair and I shit myself. That's so good. It's like a choose your own adventure, but for how this guy died. <laughs> so then we cut to the uh, UN. Where their evil plan appears to be, again, getting rid of all the nukes and feeding the hungry. Well, the, the bad guys. this is where we get the, um, the the ridiculous line where he comes out and he says, we figured out what happened to all the children and people who disappeared, the radiation. <laughs> and everybody right. goes, oh. And no one oh. had follow-up questions. Right. They go, yes. oh, right, radiation. Of course, the radiation caused everyone to disappear out of and their radiation. clothes. <laughs> and look, it, 
it's not like this is a world that doesn't think dumb religious thing first. I mean, like, okay, so a bunch of exact shit from the Bible happens and the people that are left are just hunting for the secular explanation. I'm sorry, have you met humans? Right, yeah, exactly. I just want to point out, hundreds of people in Spain faced the wrong way for the sunset and thought it was a miracle. <laughs> this is not a planet where people don't assume God first, okay? They were just like, wait, that way's east, right? It's a miracle! No one had a compass? This is not a planet where everyone's like, well, I don't know, it's probably some scientific explanation first. <laughs> No, if a not door at slams all. in ninety nine percent of America's house, we think it's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> a book can't fall off a shelf on this planet without it being like, "Great, there's an afterlife, and someone's crossed through to the other side to leave me a message." <laughs> yes. <laughs> But apparently in this movie, when everyone vanishes word for word according to the biblical public apocalypse, everyone's like, no, wait, wait, wait. Let's think critically about this. <laughs> what does Dawkins say? <laughs> now, I, I have to admit that it is a challenge to keep the stakes high in a movie where all the babies on Earth die before the end of Act 1. But damn it if I'm not on the edge of my seat. But just in case you're not, I'm going to give Act 3 the hard sell before we come back to polish it off. Will anyone in this movie ever work again? Will God get what's coming to him for all the baby murder? Find out the answer to these questions and more when we return for the pathetically unsatisfying conclusion of Left Behind, the movie. Hello and welcome back to GNN's Political Roundup. My guest today is Senator Ian Crantyteist, the charismatic politician who has taken America by storm over the last year. Senator, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me on, Darren. Now, Senator, when the entire Congress and Senate disappeared in the rapture, you mm -hmm. became sort of a rallying point for Americans getting mm -hmm. back on mm -hmm. their feet. Yeah. Can you tell me a little about that? Well, you know, I saw a hole that needed filling, and I filled it. I think you're being a little modest there, sir. Person. Your bipartisan policies and common sense initiatives have made you one of the most popular senators in history, and political polling shows you as one of the most promising candidates for president in the last 50 years. How do you feel about that? Honestly, I'm just honored. You know, the American people, they're hard to knock down. But when they do get knocked down, they get up, they dust off, and they come back stronger than before. Very That's what this country is about. Now, obviously, your opponent, Jesus Christ, has a lot of supporters worried. What do you think? Can you beat the Son of God in a race for our nation's highest office? Well, listen, I think Jesus is a fantastic candidate, mm -hmm. and I'm honestly honored to run against him. But the truth is, I think he's a little out of touch with what people want right now. And I think this race is going to give the American people a chance to make a choice about moving forward into the future or being trapped in the past. Agreed. Agreed. Very good point. Now, can you speak to the accusations that some have leveled that you are uh, the biblical antichrist? <laughs> well, honestly, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't heard those rumors. And of course, they're just silly. I mean, it strikes me as just so much schoolyard name calling to make fun of someone's name like that. The Krantiteists came over on the Mayflower. And I think it's just a little below the level of political discourse to be name calling and, you know, accusing the other candidate of being the morning star, the bright risen one, to bask the world in a thousand years of war and fire. That's extreme. So true. Great job staying it's above ridiculous. the fray there. Well, thank you very much for joining me tonight, Senator. Coming up next, are penis demons the new black? Rory Frenchry says yes. Okay, great. Now that we're all settled in, I want to thank everyone and welcome you all officially to the first campaign meeting for the official candidacy of Jesus Christ 2037. We're now doing it on odd years, apparently. Okay, I thought I would start off with a few little things. First of all, thank you to Karen for bringing the amazing muffins. I'm grateful, but I think my thighs are going to hate you later. <laughs> Just kidding, Karen. Also, please make sure to rinse out your mugs and your cups when you're done with them and put them back in the dish drainer. The building's been having a problem with this, uh, you know, the demon mirror ants and... Nobody wants to have their loved ones tricked into an agonizing death with the sound of their voice. So make sure and wash it before you put it in the dish drainer. I'm looking at you, Josh. <laughs> my wife thought my kids were outside. <laughs> okay, well, moving on. I, I think this first meeting should really just be a brainstorm on something important. What is our hashtag? How about he is risen? Yeah, I I like it, but... It's a little retro, and it also carries a lot of the juju of the you-know-what. 
right? Now, I, we're looking for something hip, something fun. I'm sorry, can I interrupt? Of course, Mr. Christ. Jesus is fine. I hate to be a broken record, but why are we not mentioning the rapture again? Okay, so again, I sent this out from last week's meeting, but we have to remember that none of the current voting base got brought up to heaven. So while we'd like people to see this as a positive, it's polling very badly. But I brought millions of the righteous up to heaven. Yes, yes, you did. And our constituents know and love that, but you didn't bring anyone currently on this planet, and that's going to be a downside. Didn't bring anyone in this room either. Josh, you touch your nephew. One time! One time! Oh, okay, okay. Why don't we take five and just come back at this hashtag idea in a minute when everybody's a little more calmed down? And we're back. When last we saw our hero, he was staring into a fireball meant for him and slowly realizing that he was actually playing second fiddle to Alan Thicke for all those years. And because <laughs> for no fucking reason, he then goes back to Ray and Chloe's house. Where he's getting his leg band-aided by some woman who works at a church. Mm -hmm. Not a doctor, no. <laughs> just a lady who works at a church. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why Like they were like, there's a hospital at the church. Yeah, but there's also a hospital at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and theirs is better. Yeah, for sure, definitely. <laughs> well, you know right. what? Probably all the doctors and shit got raptured and all the assholes th that work at the church hospital are still here for some time. Doctors okay, all, and babies. All the people who dealt with actually helping people, yeah. <laughs> they went to heaven. <laughs> Uh, I wrote in my notes, this is like the Da Vinci Code, but all of it's the Bible. So it's yeah. super boring and obvious. <laughs> well, and that's, this is like the opening for Act 3, and they say, okay, so how can we really build attention? I know. Let's have them all do Bible study together. Right. Because their plan seems to be, because they're, they keep gathering these, like, people in Chicago. They're like, all right, we gotta get a group together. And their plan seems to be to pray. I mean, that's kind of fair though, right? Like, I don't understand why if you, if you're like, this is the rapture and this is the end of days, just don't, you don't have, don't do anything. It's, if, if this is what you believe that this is all going to happen, it's what's supposed to happen. Stop trying to, try, stop trying to do stuff about it. Just let it go. Well, see, but that's clearly what all the religious people think. The problem is, is that Buck hasn't found Jesus yet. So he that's still right. thinks he can stop God. That's right. As a matter of fact, this is another great spot where the uh, secret atheist rewrites come in because after they start explaining, oh, well, in Ezekiel 22, 13, it says this, and, and Kirk Cameron's character says, well, how can you possibly make predictions based on those vague-ass ramblings that you find in the Bible? And, of course, nobody answers that question. They're like, oh. Well, and yeah. then they throw a fucking smoke bomb and go hide behind a pew. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, couldn't that really be applied to any kind of war situation? Uh -huh. I mean, the Middle East is a really war-toned place. Mm, yeah, but jingly keys! <laughs> <laughs> and as he's walking out, the reverend says, You can feel the Lord tugging at your heart, Buck. And uh, I just wanted boy. so bad for him to say, That's not the Lord, that's you, and that's not my heart either. Exactly. This is also the uh, Satan will bring seven years of peace to the Middle East. Yeah. What a dick. <laughs> <laughs> we must stop him. He's going he's gonna to get the, the Which hunger. Which super confused me because I'm like, why seven years? <laughs> why just seven years? Yeah, what that's happened? the weird thing is they keep, they keep really, like, like, that would be, I think, everyone at the UN who's, you know, not yet, like, you know, totally hypnotized by this guy. Why does he keep saying seven years? Why does he want it to end in seven years? <laughs> yes. Why doesn't he just say, I'm going to bring peace to it. I hope it lasts a long time. Right. <laughs> Any time over, you know, like at least seven years, I would hope. Right. I would say a minimum of seven years. People would be like, oh, that's good. It'd be weird that's if you'd be like, we're going to yeah, feed yeah. the world for three days. <laughs> Wait, why? Why three days? I just... I just think that's, you know, after seven years, we're going to want to mix it up a little bit. Maybe a <laughs> war here, a war there. People will get bored. There's only so many seasons of The X Factor you can watch. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will have gone to Comic-Con by then. <laughs> and at this point, by the way, I just want to point out that Airline Lady, who was a stewardess at the beginning of this movie, is now a senior member of staff for the head of the UN. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It is. It's ludicrous. Which would be like if tomorrow I was the Secretary of State. I was yeah. like, well, I'm a comedian <laughs> on a podcast. But then Walter Cronkite and Dan Savage made some really nice phone calls. I mean, great <laughs> recommendations. Really. Do you know what it was? I figured it out. I figured it out. She was she was on on a flight, 
and there was some world some some world leader was on the flight and he got out his phone and was like we're gonna bomb somebody and he started making the call to bomb somebody and she was like you really need to put your phone away away. (laughs) the bombing the bombing never happened she like single-handedly you know averted world war three and and Buck was sitting next to the dictator at the time when that happened. That's the phone call they Ignoring were talking it. about. I got it. Yeah, just being like trying, but like having no authority. Like you really shouldn't do that. You really shouldn't do that. And then he hit the flight attendant button. <laughs> she came over and was like, "Sir, you really have to put that away." Oh, okay, fine. No. Countdown to Armageddon. Bing. Now, of course. <laughs> The good news is that um, because she's now the senior staff member for the Antichrist. Oh, oh I gave that away. My bad. Uh, oh, spoiler I'm not, even, I'm not alert. doing the rest now of the podcast. I'm done. Now she's in the UN, so that when Buck comes to see everybody, she can secretly ferret him in, so he can go see Doctor Happy Jew about the magic formula. Yep. Yeah, exactly. and they do. Thank goodness. Thank goodness that she's there for that. Yeah, yeah. It's almost contrived. It's so fortunate. Then. Just when it seems like Buck won't be able to be a part of the UN meeting, everyone has a prayer off, <laughs> and there's a jock jam while everyone starts to believe in Jesus. Yeah. So, like, we get a jam down now, Jesus, jam down now, and Buck just has a breakdown in the bathroom and starts believing in Jesus, and... And again, this is such a crazy moment where he says, please forgive me to God. Cause he's saying, please forgive me for living a good life and helping people, even though I didn't think you existed. That's what he's asking for forgiveness. For. Right. <laughs> Being a good person. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not doing it because I think a wizard wants me to. No, so then no. we cut to the, the UN meeting, which is. First of all, it's not only is it not the UN meeting room, it's more like the underground lair from Dr. Strangelove, <laughs> which they invite not only a reporter to sit in on, but also they have invited two random businessmen to. Yes. <laughs> and again, to the entire, like, all of the nations of the world, he's like, seven years of peace, and you want one person to raise their hand and go, I'm sorry, I missed, what happens at year seven? Did we... Is this like a truce thing? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I don't have the speaking stick, so... Uh. so I, I also love that in this universe, the UN Secretary General can just eliminate all of national borders and create new countries. Is that in the charter? <laughs> well, he voted on it, and they all raised their hands. Oh, well, those so. ten racial stereotypes agreed, then, in that case. Yeah. Exactly. The Chinese guy wearing the rice paddy hat and the French mime and the the Italian guy with a hot lasagna in his hands were all like, it's a me. Now we are all one country called Antichristia. Sure, why the fuck not? That will go really well around the rest of the world. But if you think that we've seen the craziest of the, out of this scene, uh, you got another thing coming. We're just right. getting warmed up. Because now we have the fucking... Kubrick esque gun <laughs> shooting in the head thing. What? And I want so badly to see because there's a girl very clearly taking notes at the beginning of this meeting. If you look at the beginning of this scene, there's a girl very. Cl- I want her notes more than anything in the world. Just like <laughs> then the secretary takes the man's gun, says you will never defy me, shoots him in the head. <laughs> then he uses his mind control power, says what a pity, what a pity, what a pity. Terribly sad, terribly sad, terribly sad. Everyone is hypnotized. (laughs) Just shoots. Also, there's a reporter there and several witnesses. Now, he later, he does a lot of, also, I want to point out, Nikolai does a lot of touching in this scene. He walks around the room. He's basically Jimmy the touchy orderly from Scrubs. (laughs) Wandering around giving him, oh, how's it going? Mm, Just mm, let that tension out. (laughs) No, I also want to point out here that, okay, if you're following the movie, all right, so so the Antichrist, for reasons that we don't really get into, needs to get rid of these two guys. Um, now, he has mind control power, so he can shoot them dead and then just use his mind control powers to make everybody think that they shot each other, apparently. But Great. why would you do that? I mean, you're in a room alone with these guys almost every other fucking time we see them in the movie. Like, yeah. isn't this the least effective way to use your mind control powers? He has an assassin, like, yes! on retainer. In that room! The albino guy is in that room! Just, yeah, just fuck garrot them and call it a day. Right! Right. Or if you're gonna kill them because you're the Antichrist, use your Antichrist powers to kill them, you know? Like, morph them together and then make them blend into a giant blades that you right. summon out of the earth. Don't just be like, alright, alright. 
There we well, go. He, he, like, he, descri- he describes this thing where he's like, well, one guy grabbed the gun, shot the other guy, and then shot himself. Like, if you have mind control powers, make them do that. Right. Let them actually and shoot And then call it a day. <laughs> don't, don't, you don't have to, don't get your heads dirty. Like, you may have mind control powers, but I could still test for gunpowder residue right. in your hand and be like, well, that's Well, it's okay, because there were a bunch of witnesses, and they all walked out of the room going, terribly mm-hmm. sad, terribly Except sad. Except for Kirk Cameron, and I'm thinking that's because he prayed to Jesus right before the meeting. Because he's a parcel tongue. Oh, yeah. right, right, yeah. That's <laughs> mind, mind control doesn't work on parcel tongue. Yeah, you know yeah. how Harry Potter can resist the imperious curse? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. But I, I know exactly how more boring. Harry Potter can. No, I don't. I've never read the... I, I, you read the Harry Potter books? I, I, I don't, I, what is with atheists and not reading the Harry Potter books? I, I've just been <laughs> laughing along at the parcel tongue joke this whole time as though I knew what the hell we were talking about. Devin, have you read the Harry Potter books? Yes, I have read They're all great of the Harry books. Potter books. They're great books. They're fantastic books. You've written a book. How can you not have read a, <laughs> read these books? I, I read the first one. You, you, you really want to get into this? I read the first one. It doesn't come up till the third one, Prisoner of Azkaban. No, sorry. Second one, Chamber second of Secrets. Second one, Paulston. It's, it's I, basically, <laughs> whichever book I've read of that fucking series, everybody tells me the next one is where it gets good if it's going to be good start at the fucking first one no, or don't expect it's me good to at the through. first one if you didn't like the first one you're not going to like any of them they're great okay then i'm not going <laughs> to like any of them awesome All right, good to well, know fine save me some fine time. <laughs> welcome to the last episode of the god <laughs> <laughs> either that or i'm just going to be a regular on the show <laughs> <Yeah. now. laughs> welcome to god awful movies with devin heater who's our new Story of the show. He read all of the Harry Potter books. Not- <laughs> so he gets to be on the show. Oh, shit. That's the first thing we do. Now, before we get to this fucking movie, I've got some books I want to make sure that you've read. <laughs> I do like every guest. Is- and this week's guest, uh, have you read uh, the Harry Potter books? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. You're not this week's guest. Then we'll try <laughs> again. Go back to New York movie. Movie. Let's go to caller number done. five. And we turn into the Matt Dillahunty show. We just hang up on people all day. Yep. <laughs> they if they get one Harry Potter reference wrong, yeah. <laughs> you're out. Oh, I'm sorry, you're out. I'm sorry. It was the common Welsh green. That's the type of dragon that there is in England, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. Well, unfortunately, you're stuck with me for the rest of this show. So now we're gonna go to the, um, I guess the to be continued monologue. Now keep in mind, Ugh, this rough. was a movie. You know, this isn't like episode one of a TV show on Netflix. This is a fucking movie, and the way oh, yeah. the movie ends is the bad guy shoots two people, and now it's yep. over. I know, like, I'm really pissed off that I, I feel like I have to watch the second and third one. Oh, God. <laughs> just just to get some closure. <laughs> just to find out if Kirk Cameron really believes or if he has another crisis of faith. Well, the question is really, where can the movie go from here? Because Kirk Cameron is entirely powerless. He's got a church full of morons in Chicago who are going to use their magic thinking powers. The thing about a sequel is it sets up what your protagonist is going to do to fight it. But it's just like, he's just like, so I'm in charge of the world. Now I can shoot people with impunity. Bye, Kirk. And Kirk's just, uh, if movie two is just Kirk walking along a highway, kicking a can, (laughs) that's fine. (laughs) Stupid Vladimir Putin with your mind control. Powers. <laughs> I could speak languages even though I don't understand them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that the okay. So like he's he's walking like he goes back to Chloe's house now because you know he's probably got a boner now that he knows you know that, like the world's coming into an end. Might as well get uh, you know might as well fuck the nose ring chick. Right. Um. Get it wet. But there's this like this closing line that's going up uh like uh or like a voiceover where he says our only hope is to join together and trust God. I don't have all the answers, but for now, faith is enough. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, because nothing ameliorates regional conflict like steadfast religious zealotry. Am I right? Am I right? right. At least for seven I wanted years. that to just pan over to a shot of Vladimir Putin just signing contracts and destroying nukes. And Kirk just in his room, just a back and forth shot of Kirk in his room just with his face screwed up being like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> get him, God, go get him. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be working, Kirk. Unfortunately. Now, I kind of want to close up in a different way than I than I normally do, though. I want to follow my mom's advice this week and try uh, to find something nice to say about this movie. So, so Devin, uh, okay. what's the nicest thing that you have to say about Left Behind, the movie? The nicest thing I have to say about Left Behind, the movie... That's the question. Just See, that so is I the question. Just... That's a great way to stall, by the way. <laughs> to <You're> follow, <laughs> follow it. What a great question. You're Obamaing it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, 
I mean, I, I listen. I, I said it. I'm, I feel compelled to watch the next one. That's kind of an insult because I feel compelled to watch the next one because nothing happened in the first one. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I feel like if it leaves you wanting more, yeah. that's got to be a good sign. Well, all right, all right. You actually it's gave me like a real the answer there, Eli. Do you have any anything nice to say about this one? I would say this movie, a nice thing. This movie is not on fire all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you can touch it without being burned. Yeah. Uh-huh. It never uses the N-word. <laughs> That's on a big screen. one. That's on a big screen, one. yeah. <laughs> maybe in the script, but... You have a feeling that it got written in there some... Maybe in the description of Theo, they were like, he's a... Oh, goddamn. <laughs> Kirk, did you write that in there? Yeah, I wrote it in pencil. All right, Kirk, we need you to stop writing that... <laughs> Jesus told me to. No, he didn't, Kirk. Yes, he did. I met this guy named Ray. <laughs> oh. Making a movie together. <laughs> yes, they are. And uh, Heath, any 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 positives to take away from this one? Well, uh, Kirk Cameron was pretty believable as Brian Williams. I thought that mm-hmm. was good. Yeah. It was a good choice, casting wise. Um, and I loved his hockey mullet. It was it was delightful. <laughs> he looked like yeah, yeah, MacGyver and Kenny Powers. It was fantastic. <laughs> And much like Brian Williams, he also was not there for things that he yes. said he was. Bunch, bunch of airplane stuff that definitely didn't happen, yeah. <laughs> oh, here I remember when I was there on that airplane crash explosions. <laughs> I think the only, the only other nice thing I have to say about this movie now that everyone did bits but me and I feel stupid, um, <laughs> is that I, you know what, like, I was at home watching this movie on my couch and, uh, I didn't touch myself the entire time. And that, <laughs> that was like a good, that was a good break for me. I think my dick needed a break. Even and when so like Kirk that Cameron's was good. wife was on screen, no shit. Well done, no, Well, you know, honestly, it sucked. It really, it really just, uh. Oh, you sucked really... yourself. You just didn't touch yourself. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I'm not flexible enough. I've got a little bit of a tummy, which prevents that, but, uh. I hear you. Sorry about yeah. that, bro. You're so repressed. <laughs> and so on this but show, yeah, we t- I mean, like this really, it really, if, if you ever wanted to, like this, this movie could end the like we we the abortion d- debate could be ended if we just made every time someone was about to have sex this movie turned on, you would stop like any sexual desire you have is immediately yeah that's eliminated. what this is what they should show in, instead of abstinence only programs instead of being like a condom will break if you look at it too long they should just be like here watch this movie and it'll be like oh my dick's inside my body <laughs> when's it gonna come out again who knows I don't know abstinence lady away. <laughs> All right, so on this show, we typically try to avoid, like, thumbs up, thumbs down type rating. So instead of asking you that, Devin, I want to ask you, what's the worst yep. venereal disease you would volunteer for rather than watch this movie again? And what's the least pleasurable way you'd be willing to catch said disease? Okay, <laughs> uh, the disease would be uh, syphilis, but it would be, like, old school syphilis. Like, you start to rot. Like no cure syphilis. Like Tuskegee you know? experiment syphilis. Yeah, right, okay. right. Like like you are in the you know, Russia, and the fucking revolution's coming, and you have syph syphilis. Like that's I think the kind of level. <laughs> or of, like, as Devin calls it, the syph. <laughs> the syph. <laughs> Just the syph. My the good sifter. friend, my, my good friend, syph. <laughs> yeah, we're on first syllable basis here. Yeah, where I mean, it's like they just sort of like they give you some morphine and say, "Hey, sorry that you're gonna slowly rot to death." Um. How would I like to contract it? Um, I mean, uh, I'm just going to make that noise until I come up with something. <laughs> you guys should see me on stage when I do my improv. It's just a lot of, no, on, let me come think of something good. Uh, just three guys standing in a circle. Uh. It's two guys having a conversation and me moaning and <laughs> trying to think of something funny to say. Trying not to mess. Um, the I think, <laughs> I, right. I think that like if I think if I like uh, I would I would contract I would trip into like a basin of like used needles. Oh, well, nice, <laughs> nice. That was worth all the uh. That was worth it. That was worth yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, listen, if you give me thirty five minutes, I'll come back with a better one. <laughs> Just call, call me tomorrow. I'm gonna workshop this. <laughs> that's all right. I forgot to record our end anyway. We're gonna have to do this again um, one way or the other. Fine. <laughs> so now, Heath, I have the same question for you. What is the worst venereal disease that you'd be willing for Devin to have, rather than to watch this movie? 
All right, well, all right, he's already got the sif. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, I don't want to say full blown AIDS. I don't want but, you to uh, say that either. But, but definitely HIV positive if, <laughs> if, if you're okay with that. Like that's half fine. Bonesies, no, please. Like halfway. That's no big deal. Look at Magic. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, and he's Dallas fine. Buyers he's Club. Doing okay. Like, like he's an not hour fine. In. No. He's not <laughs> fine. He's HIV. Sort of a bummer. <laughs> and finally, Eli, how bad would a subway ride have to be to be worse than this movie? I, I, th- okay, so this is, this movie, in order for it to be worse than this movie, it would have to be the G train in the middle of summer. Rough. With a group of drunk frat boys at one end of the train. Yep. And a, sh- a set of the bad, sh- not the good showtime dancers, but the bad showtime oh, no. dancers. The dangerous like the, ones. The, the, they're, oh, yeah, exactly. The ones who just stand there and slap wep, the walls of the car yes. and go, showtime! <laughs> but they don't actually dance. Like they just stand there and scream showtime at everyone. And you're like, man, I hope they turn the music off. That, simultaneous <laughs> with the smelly homeless guy who's taken up nine seats. And yep. just eye fucking you like, yeah, I'm going to touch you. You know I'm going to reach across and touch you. I'm very clearly going to touch it. That's the level of subway ride I'd have to take. You know who else you need? You know who else you need on that subway ride? The guy, the guy with the crazy hair who has that binder with mirrors on it because he doesn't like looking at people in the eyes. And whenever you look at him in the eyes, he holds it up. So <laughs> the mirrors. do you know that guy? Do you know who I'm talking about? I have no idea. Who We're going to go find him. He's hilarious. <laughs> That's fucking insane. I miss New York. Or that, uh, or that, or that, you know, that burn guy? Like the guy who's, like, was horribly burned in some horrible oh, accident. Yeah. But his yeah, clothes, yeah. like, he has, like, the nicest clothes on the subway, but he's still asking for money, and you're kind of like, guy, at least play the part. <laughs> exactly, do it. Are you sealed? Um, I, or maybe the, uh, if you want my body dancer guy. You ever uh, seen him? Oh, yeah. 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 Like, if you want my body, <laughs> and you think I'm dancing, and you think I'm, 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 I'm so I'm glad that this podcast will be so relatable to people all over the world. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> For down south, just imagine the Christian hell. That's what we commute on. We commute on the Christian hell. Yeah, there you go. Much. You know how you get in your nice air-conditioned car and you listen to your podcast, and you're like, ha, 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 so fun. I'm enjoying myself. I'll stop and get some gas. We're just, sur- we're in a packed sausage tube of human t- desecration. And definitely the AC. He's not working. No, for sure. Never, never. And there's a sign that says this is an air conditioned car right above it, just to remind you that there's one here. It's just not working. Right, exactly. And then it says we're making express stops, and you're like, oh, come on, but I was going just That's one. Not the whole <laughs> clown. God, damn. Nope, you're going all we're the way Coney to Coney Island and back now. <laughs> Fuck, exactly. Next stop, you're going Delaware. To Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any uh, final thoughts before we wrap up, guys? I made the mistake of going to Kirk Cameron's Twitter while watching this film. He's got some crazy, he's a, he's a crazy one, huh? Oh, oh yeah. I, I, you know, listen, I'm, I don't pay attention to Kirk Cameron. Like he's not, he, I don't think about him. And that's why he went crazy, Devin. No one paid attention <laughs> to Kirk Cameron. So he was in this movie and I was like, that's weird that he's in this movie. And then I went to his Twitter and I was like, it's not weird at all that no. he's in this movie. It is, he is playing the part that he made for himself. Yep. He went full. He went full Christian. <laughs> you never, never go know. full Christian. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. Well, Devin, I can't thank you enough for suffering through this with us. Uh, if our listeners are presently fearing Devin withdrawal once the episode is over, uh, where the, where can they go to get their fix? Oh, my goodness. There are so many places. Uh, what are they? Uh, don't Facebook friend me because I don't know you. That's weird. <laughs> uh, but you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is at Devin Heater, which is my name. Uh, but if you want to follow, if you want to know more about Gus, uh, which would be cool, uh, you can follow Gus. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash this is the end Gus. We had that before the movie. This is the end came out. Just so everyone knows. They, they stole your idea. Gotcha. Gotcha. They stole our idea. Uh, and then you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Gus Improv. Awesome. And of course, all of that's, that's going to be place. linked on the show notes for this episode. Devin, thanks again for joining us. No problem, guys. Thank you. And while that does wrap up our review of Left Behind, it doesn't wrap up the episode because before we go, we're going to take a couple of minutes to talk about what's up next and a quick preview review. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Left Behind 2, Tribulation Force. Yeah, I guess we already kind of spilled the beans on that one. Yeah, exactly. And the real frightening thing here is that based on the preview, there is no question in my mind that the budget went Way down. Notice down. Yes, absolutely. Based on the fact that they use the jet bombing scene from the first movie <laughs> yes, in their preview. Shot. 
<laughs> that tells you how low the budget. They literally used all of the budget. I don't know who was in charge. Maybe they gave someone's toddler the budget. And he was like, the first day we spend $10 million. Every other day, $3. God. <laughs> That's three times my allowance. Everyone will be great. That's it. Really looks like that because it looks like to me like their plan was for this first one to go up to be really big and then make some money that they could use to shoot the second and third one. When that didn't go through, they decided to make the movie anyway. And everyone, just even in the preview, looks so depressed to be there, so everyone, unhappy. They've all everyone looks like they go. just got in a sweaty, screaming fight with their agent. Yes, <laughs> everyone in the movie has a different hairstyle, has a di- different <laughs> facial hair. They've gained weight. They've lost weight. This was all something where they spent months fighting their lawyers, being like, no, I just won't show up on set. If you don't show up on set, you're going to pay him $10 million. Fine, fine, I'll do it. But you know what? I'm going to dress up like a Pokemon the entire time. I'm wearing a Pikachu <laughs> costume for this. I was on Matlock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> do you know who I am? <laughs> and I Not guess- anymore, we fucking don't. <laughs> yeah, right. And I-, I guess this is probably just a podcaster thing, but... Like in the preview, you can actually tell that the quality of the audio is worse in this new movie. Yeah, exactly. Every everything has downgraded the audio, the film. I, like it started being filmed on a different camera. Yeah, the ex- <laughs> the extras are being paid less, so then the special effects look worse. <laughs> Vladimir Putin looks slightly thinner. It's just every <laughs> everything looks less nice. And the first movie wasn't great. It just looks less nice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's tough to step down from this one without adding Nick Cage. But, but they did. Uh, they did. Yeah. It also seems like they're they kept trying to set up the fact that something interesting is ha- going to happen in this movie while hinting to you that actually no it's not no Nothing interesting no. is going to happen. They kept being like, "Oh, and these folks are going to be on the I mean there's going to be lots of praying and they're going <laughs> to Did you make a plan? Oh, I've got a plan. Is your plan to pray? Yeah, my plan's to pray. <laughs> it, it, it I'm not going to lie to you, my plan pray. is this movie's mostly going to be about people praying. I mean, they admit that right up front because they, like, say at the beginning, uh, nothing can stop the apocalypse and God's plan. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, then I guess there's nothing for us to watch in this what movie, What a weird right? movie. <laughs> <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode four to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Devin Heater for joining us tonight and an enormous thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a guy from Brooklyn telling you to fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. 